You've probably noticed that a lot of your favorite tools, a lot of your favorite software are rolling out new features in AI. A lot of people have questions, fears, concerns about AI. I've written a little bit about that on the blog, but I've been really impressed with some of the ways that Logos is rolling out AI in their tool. And I wanna show you a quick tutorial of that and talk about why I think the way they're implementing it is really a way forward for the future. So I've got my Logos Bible software pulled up. I wanna jump in and show you this feature real quick. We're gonna do something really simple. If you're not familiar with Logos, I've got some more tutorials, but we're literally, once I'm in, going to just come to search. And you'll notice something new if you're familiar with Logos. There's now these stars in the search bar. They're referring to this as their smart search, smart search. And I um, I think it's been implemented really well. You can do a few things. In the past, you would just put a search field in here and it would give you results. Like before, you can choose what you wanna search. So do you wanna search your books? Do you wanna search books that you currently have open? Um, you can search your personal books, maybe your top Bibles. There's some options with collections. I'm gonna do a whole tutorial talking about Logos collections. But for now, we're just gonna search my books. And this is where I think what makes their AI implementation interesting and different. Um, if you go to one of my favorite tools for AI is perplexity, perplexity.com, and they do a good job of citing their sources. Uh, but when you search, you're basically searching the internet. You're going out and asking its AI to scrape the internet for information. If you put a simple Google search in, one of the things you're going to get from that Google search is you're going to get whatever Google thinks based on its algorithms is the right answer. What Logos is doing here that I think is helpful is they're only allowing their AI engine to access, if you choose your books, then it's going to draw from just the books that you have in Logos, which means the AI answers you're getting are based on the library you own. So in many ways, it's like asking an assistant to go through all of your books and specifically base answers off of those books. So it's not given access to the internet. It's not given access to sources you don't have. If it's in your library, that's what it's gonna build its answers on. So I wanna give you a few examples of maybe some different searches you can do with their AI, their smart search. So um, let's ask, first of all, just a really simple question. So um, where uh, in the Bible was Mary pondering these things in her heart. I thought about a, a, a passage, I can't remember where it is. I ask it and it's gonna produce what you're used to in Logos, which is it's just giving me search results from my books, much like you would a Google search with links. But you'll notice there's this new synopsis section. If I expand that, two things I really like that are taking place here. So I get the answer. The Bible mentions Mary pondering these things in her heart in Luke 2.19. So I could see that, I can click to it and open it. It's also got the second reference down here. I can click to and open. But the other thing it's doing, you'll notice it, in the additional information it's given me, it's given me sources. This is like what Perplexity does that I really like. So I can see where in my library it's actually pulled these answers from. So in this case, the Harmony of the Synoptics and from the Collins uh, Thesaurus of the Bible. I think that's really, really helpful. But that's a pretty simple thing. You could Google search that and probably get the right answer. Let's try to make it a little bit harder. Let's ask a really general question. Uh, who was Herod? Here, let's see, Herod Antipas. So for, perhaps your uh, history is escaping you. So again, it's gonna show lots of results from commentaries that I have, from Bible dictionaries that I have. You could click on some of these and read you know, a whole article. So you know, quite a lengthy article here just on Herod Antipas. But you'll see what it's doing through its AI, its smart search, is it's giving me a synopsis. Herod Antipas was the son of Herod the Great, a uh, Samaritan woman that he married, uh, and making him half Idumean and half Samaritan. He ruled as Tetrarch of Galilee and Perea. So we get the information. And once again, all of the sources. So if I'm interested in digging in deeper, if I recognize one of these sources as perhaps one that I often turn to, it makes it really easy for me to open those up. So really good at taking, again, maybe the answer you need, and there's, there's a place, go read all about Herod Antipas, this long article here. But if you're just needing to really quickly remind yourself of some facts, perhaps you've forgotten, I think their uh, synopsis here is a really helpful way of doing that. Uh, another search I wanna be able to show you, uh, let's ask it something that's a little less of a fact-based question. I mean, Google search is pretty good at returning those facts. But if we wanted to consult our uh, our books for something that might be a, a little more, require a little more interpretation or a little deeper knowledge, we can do that as well. So in this case, I'm gonna ask the question, why did, so this isn't just a fact, but maybe an explanation, um, why did John eat honey and locusts? I could see this being the kind of question my kids would ask. And uh, if you wanted to show them how they could study for themselves, you can come in here and put this into a simple search and ask it, and again, I'm gonna get lots of results here on John the Baptist, articles on, uh, you know, you could go read all about locusts. 
But the synopsis, I think, has actually done a really well job. So John the Baptist, a religious figure who lived in the Judean desert, ate locusts and wild honey as part of a simple aesthetic lifestyle. The diet was not unusual for the time and place, as locusts were considered a ceremonially clean instinct, uh, excuse me, insect that Old Testament Jews were allowed to eat. Now, perhaps you didn't know this. That's a really interesting point. And again, it cited that, so I could actually click and continue to read more. Uh, it was actually the article I had pulled up. So then it's going to give me more specific details. The consumption of locusts and wild honey symbolized John's wilderness experience and his commitment to a life of piety. Again, a couple of sources. This dietary choice aligned with John's role as messenger preparing the way for the Messiah, emphasizing his focus on spiritual matters rather than worldly comforts. I think that's a pretty good answer to this question and one you could definitely talk through with your family. And again, you've got the sources if you want to dig deeper. Uh, I'm finding myself using this even without realizing it. Uh, much like if you search Google right now, it'll often give you AI results at the very top of that search. So you might be actually getting answers from AI you didn't even realize. And it's been interesting since uh, Logos rolled this out. I've been finding myself using these simply because it's there and it's a quick way at the top and then often digging deeper into the articles below. But once again, I think they're implementing it in a really helpful way. It's limited to your library. It's not given access to the internet. And in this new world of AI, I think uh, you're not gonna be able to avoid it. AI is being built into all sorts of things, but at least here you have the confidence of being able to see where that artificially created answer is coming from. You can see the sources and you can know that it's coming from sources that you've already vetted and approved to be in your library. And we're going to get into this more. I'm going to do another tutorial specifically on collections, how you can build collections of books, and then you can actually use AI to specifically search and build answers just off of those collections. So instead of your whole Logos library, you can narrow it down to an author or a particular series of books, things that you really do trust for the right information. So it's a great tool and like all the things in Logos, uh, the more you use it, the more helpful it'll be, and it's really customizable to do exactly the things you want to do with it. So check back. Hope to bring you some more Logos tutorials, and uh, check out the article I have on my website on why now might be the best time to be picking up a Logos subscription for yourself.